everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I'm your host, Marla Martinson, and we're going to have a great conversation today with Alan Knight. He is a former Zen monk. He's going to tell us a little bit more about himself, and we're going to talk about this whole COVID anxiety, what's going to happen, how we can get in the Zen zone, and more. Hey, Alan. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I didn't realize it's called Cosmic Conversations. Yeah, wow. I call it Cosmic Conversations because I, I do a lot of that uh, cosmic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're right up the right alley. Cosmic during the COVID. We need the cosmic bringing it down. <laughs> <laughs> so what, are, what have you been doing, Alan? You're a coach. You're, you're, you're a former Zen monk helping people to stay calm. You're no, there's no better person than you to talk to about well, your work during this time. You're very kind. I was thinking about uh, the fact that uh, when the COVID attacked uh, and it's the whole thing started for a couple of days, I mean, I'm very human, right? I'm a human being. I'm not that cosmic. Uh, and it was very surreal. Like everyone, like, what the hell? It's a, Toronto's a ghost town. It's, it's usually filled with cars. So I, I was kind of taken aback. And then I said, I better practice what I preach. So I went inside and I got myself back in that Zen zone you talked about and uh, realized that like everything else, I was going to turn lemon into lemonade. So in fact, what I've done is I've intensified my inner work to the point where I really consolidated getting in that Zen zone, be calm, clear, centered. And by doing that, I don't let the external affect me anywhere near like I would if I was not in the Zen zone. And I have a bit of an advantage because living as a monk for nine years, I was in self-isolation for, for a long period of time. So I'm kind of used to it. So I've adapted really well. I feel great. A lot of wonderful things are happening. How did you, um, I love to hear your story. I'm sure the viewers would. How did you become a monk for nine years? Well, I, the, the reality was that I came very close. I traveled a year when I was in university. I was kind of lost. I was taking a bachelor in psychology at the time. And I didn't really know who I was. I was not happy. And I said, I'm taking a year off traveling the world. I went from one country to another. So, oh, another country. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. But something was missing. And one day on the Mediterranean Sea, on the desert, I was alone. And I came that close to dying. I had a heat stroke. And that really woke me up. I came close to dying. And I said, whoa, I want to find out if there's more than just our physical body and our thinking, rational mind. So when I returned home to Montreal, which is my hometown, I met these people at what was called the Zen Meditation Center, and their eyes were calm, clear, big, center. And I said, I want that. I moved in. I lived there for nine years. Then I missed women too much. I left the monastery. Yeah, nine years is a long time to go without women. And um, <laughs> what, was, what was the age range there when you were doing that? The age? Well, there was a men's and women's community. But I mean, you. Now. How old were you? What was your age range? Oh, was I was 24 at the time. Till oh, 32. boy. Peak time for women, Peak to, But I made up for it, Marla. <laughs> I definitely made up for it. Oh, good, good, good. But one so, of the things I learned when I left yeah. is that when I went back into society, I was a bit of a basket case, and I learned that Zen, getting in the Zen zone is great, but unless you integrate into every facet of your life, it's kind of limited. And that's what led me to creating a formula that helps people tap in the zone be confident, be focused, but then master their relationship building skills. So it's it's a whole formula that's a holistic approach. So give us some tips on how to get into the Zen zone that people could do easily to, if they're feeling some anxiety. Well, that's interesting because, you know, the obvious thing that people think that would be my answer was, oh, meditate. But that's not necessarily true. Because if you've got a lot, let, let's, I'll give you an example. A lot of my friends that have recently called me suppress their emotion. They're afraid to express themselves in their relate, And now in relationship, they're living with the person yeah. more than ever. Yeah. And they're either going to grow and heal or kill, or kill each other. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean physically. Right. But let's say somebody has suppressed emotion and anger, and they're afraid to communicate because they're afraid of what the other person is going to think, or they might get rejected. If you hold in that energy, that is enough to get you out of the Zen zone. And anything you, me any meditation you do is going to be very limited because you're just sitting on a powder keg. So one of the things that I tell people is it's time to own our own personal boundaries. It's, it's time for us to accept, love, and respect ourselves enough 
that we're going to stand up and be who we really are. And sometimes that's not going to be fun because the other person might not handle it. But whether we're going to get real, get authentic, and find out where this relationship is and, and either raise the bar in the relationship or get out of the relationship if, you, if it's not going to work. So expressing ourselves and owning our boundaries is one of the things that I'm a big stickler to. Yeah, and keeping our, we're the ones who keep our boundaries. We can't expect the other person to hold our boundaries because it's not their boundary. So we've got to hold what we decide. We, we got to be ourselves. And a lot of times we're in relationships that are dysfunctional, codependent, because we're too busy trying to please somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's, those relationships are never going to go anywhere. We'll never be happy. And ultimately, I'm a big believer in high level soulmates. If we want to attract our high level soulmate, we want to get into our inner soulmate. You know that. It's yeah, part of what well, you do. this conversation's gone an interesting turn because um, let me ask you about this. So this is very fascinating to me. So I'm on, I also do readings. I do intuitive readings and I'm on a psychic hotline, which is more, um, this hotline is more focused on intuitive guidance and um, coaching, <clears throat> but I've never, I get a lot of calls. I would, a lot. Um of women from women who are w hoping to get back with their ex, wondering what their ex is thinking, uh, wondering if the ex is coming back, even if the ex is with someone else, but are they thinking about me, but do they miss me? Um, I've never seen so many people wanting to know about what's going on with their ex. And I'm wondering if this is just something that they're feeling a little, some anxiety and fear and want that thing that's known. Or what do you have to say on that, if anything? <laughs> well, from all the work that I've done and all the women friends that I have, there's a lot, a lot of wonderment in your what you just said. A lot of wondering. Yeah. Wondering. Yeah. I wonder. Wondering. Thinking. 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 The true soul, my humble opinion, for us to attract our soulmate, we need to be so solid in who we are mm -hmm. and have faith and trust, know who we are, love who we are. The wonderments are useless. We don't know what they're doing. What they're doing, what they're not doing is irrelevant. What's most relevant is what am I doing? How am I evolving to the point where I become so joyous, so free, so happy, so loving, without attachment, and to the point where even if we don't have our so-called partner, we are fine exactly as we are. When you actually feel like that, not intellectually, we all know that this spiritual, a lot of have done a lot of personal development and spirituality. We might know that intellectually, but are you actually being it? And you actually live in freedom, in peace, in centeredness on a consistent basis. Then the vibration that you have created in yourself is more likely to draw in that person quietly in God's time, not our time. But there's way too much manipulation, control, and wonderment going on, in my opinion. <laughs> Yes, because uh, there are women who will call psychic after psychic after psychic asking, is this guy coming back? Is he, you know, and just it's giving the power outwards. Totally. Totally giving the power out. There's a, there's a difference between, sorry, did I interrupt you? No, no, go ahead. There's a, a beautiful thing you're talking about there, because to me, there's a difference between me feeling good, feeling clear, but sometimes I'm not clear. I might need a friend to bounce something off yeah. or a psychic to bounce something off to get confirmation versus what a lot of people do is they become too dependent mm -hmm. on what the other person is going to tell them. Oh, will I be with this person? Oh, okay. My psychic right. told me I'm going to be with them. A, a psychic once told me that a woman friend of mine, Joanne, who I just met, I'm going to marry her and have three children with her. And I freaked out for two months. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we, we became friends. We were never meant to be together. But I bought into what the psychic told me. Yes. Or I'll get a call from somebody that, that actually lives with someone or is dating someone and says, is this the right person for me? Or is there someone better out there? So I say, <laughs> if, you're ask, if you have to ask that, obviously you know that it's not your right person Absolutely. if you have those doubts. It's so know. easy to depend and reach out to, like as a teacher, that's why I created a program where you become your own coach. I don't want anyone to depend on me. I give insights, I give tools, but you got to become your own person. Right. And I think that when we evolve to a certain level where we're so confident in who we are, 
95% of the time we're getting our own answers from within and from our yeah. higher self. Yeah. That's what I believe. Now, as a man and a coach, uh, I also get this question <clears throat> a lot from women. They, they, they're they dating someone, but he doesn't seem that interested. Maybe he won't call them for a week or two, then he comes back. Very wishy-washy. I say a man, if a man loves you or is wants you as his you know, forever girl, he's not going to just let you be out there for some other guy to snatch up. He's going to let it be known. He's not going to wait a week or two to contact you, come in and out. Um, but I get this question a lot. Well, what is he really thinking? I mean, are we going to be together? He, he doesn't, he, I don't understand. Why is he not more, you know, involved? What you just told me tells me everything I need to know about the women that you're talking about, not the man. Okay. Is a woman who thinks like that clearly doesn't love, adore, and respect herself at a high level. She's giving way too much power to the guy. What's he going to do? If the guy is your soulmate and adores you and loves you unconditionally, you're going to know it, and that's what you deserve to have. And if you have some wishy-washy, why are you even considering someone who's wishy-washy? Because you're probably wishy-washy a little bit in your own relationship with yourself. That's... What yeah, I would and say. then the, the questions come up. This is great because for singles who are going to watch this, this is really going to help. And um, some women will say, well, he's not a good communicator or he's been hurt in the past. So that's why he's not going forward with me, but he's just kind of there, but he's not. So a lot of excuses. But I still think even if someone's been hurt in the past or they're not a good communicator, they're still going to move forward with that soulmate. If somebody wants to enable somebody, that's their choice. If I, I, I certainly would not be interested in any way with someone. I've enabled, I, one of my patterns, Marla, over the years was to, to go after women that were not really available, especially mm -hmm. emotionally. We're not really available. Why? And if someone came my way that really liked me, I wasn't really interested. I was more interested in finding, getting somebody, yeah. working to get them to love me, you know? So I think that when, we, when we're too much of the mothering, caregiving type of person that's willing to overlook a lot, hey, that's nice, it's compassionate, but do you really want someone who you're not even sure is going to work on themselves and ends up being somewhat self-destructive and then is just going to be a toxic, uh, a, a, a toxic influence in your life? you got to question that. Again, it goes back to how much you love yourself, I think. Yeah. And, and um, doing that inner work to love ourselves. Cause we might say, I, I, um, there was a woman I was talking to once she was, Oh, I love myself, but, but she was not healthy, very overweight, not applying herself into work, uh, no money in the bank, just everything like that would show the opposite that she hadn't taken care and loved herself completely. I but, think loving yourself is a holistic thing. You've got to love yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, having wonderful friends, having a great career. It's many things combined. So she might love herself on some areas, some right. pieces of the pie, but certainly not globally. Right. So it has to be global. That so well, that we, we need to work. I mean, we'll never be perfect, but we right. want to. We want to be sufficiently whole, never perfectly whole, but sufficiently whole to attract a whole relationship. I'll never forget, Marla, interesting. I had a wonderful aunt that passed away a few years ago, such a wise person. And she said to me, I, 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 I once was considering marrying somebody and I asked my aunt what she thought. She said, I would be careful, Alan, because neither of you really are solid in the relationship you have with yourself. She said, the way I would describe a great relationship, when two people come together and they're just looking at each other, that's different than when they're looking, they're walking together as two solid people. And I knew that that woman and I were not two solid people. So I hated what she said. Right. She was right. Oh, so you didn't do it. I didn't do it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So many of us forge on into marriages or relationships anyway, because we think, well, it's better than to be alone. A lot of people. I think and the way I describe it is that most of us, are running, we're, we're trying to find, we're running, we say we want love, but what we're really doing is going after mommy and daddy in a younger body because we haven't got the love and respect and it's still there. 
So we're looking, and sometimes that's why I think a lot of dysfunctional relationships happen. We're not really, really meeting our true, true high-level soulmate. We still need to work out what they call karmic relationships to finally learn the lesson. I met a woman the other day, 29 years, hasn't had sex in five years, abusive husband, but she doesn't have the balls to get out of it. She's not with her true high-level soulmate. So, but if she extricated herself from right. that, right. love built herself up, she could attract her ideal mate, but it takes some work. Yeah, and especially she's not a young, uh, you know, chick anymore. If she's been with a guy 30 years, maybe she's in her 50s or 60s, I don't know. But she's 50. So we get, um, women get afraid, you know. Oh, men usually like younger women. I won't find someone else. What am I going to do on my own at this age? You know that I told her, I said, you are so beautiful and sexy. She said, really? <laughs> she couldn't believe she's a beautiful, sexy woman. And I gave her a compliment and she reacted to that. She right. sees herself totally different. Yeah. Yeah. After being beat down so many years, it, exactly. it, it takes a lot to build back up and get that, those balls, as you say, to move forward on our own. Right. <laughs> hey. And it's very um, fascinating that you say high level soulmate, because sometimes people will ask me also, am I with my soulmate or am I with my twin flame? And women especially get hung up on these terms. But I always explain that we travel in soul groups and a soulmate may be it's a friend, a pet, to somebody that you had to learn something with, someone you're dating that taught you big lessons. These are all soulmates, but a high level soulmate sounds like that romantic partner that is going to really be a perfect for you relationship. So well spoken. I mean, the way I see it, we, have, we all have many soulmates. And I remember Kubler-Ross described there's karmic soulmates. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of them where we very connected, probably knew each other in past lives, but we have some hard lessons to learn. Yeah. They're, they're friend soulmates, uh, family soulmates, um, uh, uh, work soulmates. But there's even, I believe, a twin soul. I believe I ha I ha my twin soul and I were together for 22 years. She passed away 10 years ago. So there's many soulmates. But I think when someone elevates their game to a really high level mm -hmm. of self-mastery and self-acceptance and self-love, now they're ready for that very special relationship that's at a very high level. That's the one I admire the most. Yeah, there's not of many of those. There, there are not many. Because uh, <laughs> most people haven't done the inner work to attract that. Right. They just want it quick and fast. When's he coming? That's a question, too. They'll ask a lot of psychics, when? When is he coming? When? 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 <laughs> and I say, when you do your well, inner work. When you do your inner work and raise your vibration, then that'll be a direct The frequency. fact that they're saying when, 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 they're focused on the expectation rather than the actual self-mastery. Mm -hmm. you know? That's what my, you, you know, I talked about, I, I'm, I'm in the, in the works of, of uh, putting together a PowerPoint and I'm meeting someone next week to launch online the Soulmate Revolution. That's what it's all about so that we can facilitate a lot of soulmates coming together from the inside out. That's what the Soulmate Revolution is all about. It's beautiful. Now tell us, uh, before I let you go, about what you've got going on with gut health. and. Well, with the pandemic era, uh, I was looking, Marla, at what can I do to give away my coaching free? Because my coaching is, paid, like you, you have your paid service. I have my paid service. So because of the pandemic era and my background in direct marketing, I thought, what can I do to give away my training free? And so a friend of mine contacted me. She's associated with a company called uh, Cloud9. They have gut brain, gut my, uh, brain health products. And I just started on them four days ago. And it's a fantastic product. And so I decided I'm going to create a group. And we're, I'm going to take them through those that want to earn extra $500 a month, $1,000 a month, $2,000. I'm going to give my training and help them to do that and get themselves healthy and 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 get themselves financially especially during these tough times so if anyone's interested in that they can contact me and i'm happy to talk uh, okay yeah I'll put the links below you guys to contact uh, alan about that uh any last words about um self-mastery or dating what do you have to close us out with i would close out with i love that question <laughs> i would say my number one suggestion for those of you listening that really want to step up, step up your game. The first thing, get fed up 
with mediocrity. Nothing will change unless it starts on the emotional level, not the mental level. Reading more books, listening to Alan Knights of the world, it's nice, but it won't get you there. What you want to do is you want to get so fed up with mediocrity, and then you say, the gig is up. I commit myself to be the best I can be. That's the best thing I could tell people right now. I love it. All right, you guys. So leave a comment below and let us know, are you settling for mediocrity? What are your relationship challenges? What are you doing to master yourself? And what are you doing during this COVID time to improve yourself? We'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much. And thanks, Alan. Thank you so much for having me. Bye.